Hello everybody and welcome to another Tide Guy video. Today's video I'm going to talk about the BCS and the BCS era bulls. I'm going to break down the conferences to tell you how they did, how the teams did, um, let you know the champions, and just kind of get a feel because I did the video last week on the New Year's Six Bulls. This is kind of the previous era. This era is from 1998 to 2013. In 2006, they did add another game. So from 98 to 2005, there's only four games. There's the Rose Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl, and the Orange Bowl. And then, like I said, in 2006, they added a fifth game, which was a separate national championship game. Now, to break it down by teams, what I did was, we'll start with the Big Ten. The Big Ten had 28 appearances in those bowls during that time. They went 13 and 15 for a winning percent of 46.4%. They had eight different schools participate in the bowls during that time. Ohio State went six and four, Michigan went two and three, Wisconsin went two and three. Penn State and Iowa both went one and one. Illinois was 0 and two. Michigan State was one and zero, and Purdue was 0 and one. Now it does show that, you know, I know most people think of Michigan and Ohio State as you know the big schools, but this did allow you know a few other schools to go to like the Rose Bowl and some other of the big bowls. So I think the Big Ten actually, you know, with eight schools, that's that's pretty impressive. Now the next conference we'll go to will be the SEC. The SEC, they had 27 appearances. They went 17 and 10 for a 63% winning percentage. They had seven different teams and they were Florida, which went five and two, LSU went four and one, Alabama went three and three, Auburn went two and one, Georgia went two and one, Tennessee went one and one, and Arkansas went zero and one. So they had one fewer participant than the Big Ten, and the, right now the SEC has 14 teams, so that means half of the conference has made a big bowl during that time. Um, and with a 63% winning percentage, that's, that's pretty impressive. Now we'll move on to the Big 12. The Big 12 made 22 appearances. They were 10 and 12 in those games for a 45.5% winning percentage. They had nine different teams make it. They had Oklahoma going four and five. They had Texas three and one. Nebraska one and one. Kansas State zero and two. Kansas was one and zero. Oklahoma State was one and zero. Baylor was zero and one. Colorado zero and one. And Texas A&M was zero and one. They had nine which is actually the highest number of different participants, which, you know, that's pretty impressive. That that shows that, you know, some teams that most people wouldn't think of. You no, know, most people, Kansas, you know, they've been down for quite a while, except for this year, you know, they made an appearance. Colorado, they're a dumpster fire right now, but, you know, they made an appearance. So it's kind of nice to see some different teams make it. Now, the next conference we'll go to would be the Pac-12. The Pac-12 made 21 appearances, and they were 13-8 and eight for a 60% win percentage. They had seven different teams make it. USC by far was the best. They went 6-1 and one in those games. Oregon was 3-2. and two. Stanford was 2-3. and three. Oregon State was 1-0. and zero. Washington was 1-0. and zero. UCLA was 0-1, and one, and Washington State was 0-1. and one. So that's seven different participants, and a lot of people... You know, they like to poke fun at Oregon State and Washington State, you know, with all this talk about realignment and that, and that, you know, they're not very good. But this goes to show you that within the last 25 years, both Washington State and Oregon State had made a major bowl. So they're not as bad as a lot of people give them credit for. Now, the next conference we'll go to is the ACC. The ACC, they had 18 appearances. And unfortunately for the ACC, they have not fared well in the BCS era and the BCS Big Bulls. They went 5-13 and 13 for just a 27.8% win percentage. They have six different teams make appearances. Florida State was 3-5. and five. Virginia Tech was 1-4. and four. Clemson was 1-1. One and one. Georgia Tech was 0-1. and one. Maryland was 0-1. and one. And Wake Forest was 0-1. and one. That tells you that Clemson did the best out of that group. And they had a 50 percent winning they won one and lost one so unfortunately it's not a really good look at that time for the ACC it was kind of a different 
back then because back then you had Florida State was kind of the dominant team. Towards the end of this, you had uh, Clemson coming on. And then I'm going to mention just a few other conferences like the Big East, the American. They had 16 appearances. They went 9-7 and seven for a 56.3 win percent. And most of the schools that won in here are now in other conferences. Uh, Miami was 3-1. and one. They're now with the ACC. West Virginia was 3-0. and oh. They're now with the Big 12. Louisville was 2-0 and oh of an ACC. Uh, Cincinnati was 0-2. And two, they're heading to the Big 12. UCF was one and zero. They're heading to the Big 12. Connecticut was 0 and one. Pittsburgh was 0 and one. They're now heading, or they're now in the ACC. Syracuse was zero and one. Virginia Tech was zero and one. Both of those are now um, also in the ACC. Uh, the Mountain West Conference. They had four appearances. They went three and one for a 75% winning percentage. Utah was two and zero. Oh. TCU was one and one. Utah is now part of the Pac-12, and TCU, as most of you know, is in the Big 12. Now the lone independent on here. They were in four. They made four appearances. They were 0 oh and four. And unfortunately, that's Notre Dame. Notre Dame did not fare well at all in the BCS era. Unfortunately, in the bowl game. The only other team that come out of the whack that did really well was Boise State. They were 2-0. and Hawaii was 1-0. and That kind of tells you in the bowl games where everything was. Now, as far as championship, the SEC had 11 appearances and they went 9-2 and in those games. That's an 81.8% winning percentage. Alabama was 3-0. and LSU was 2-1. and Florida was 2-0. and Auburn was 1-1. and And Tennessee was 1-0. and Then we'll go to the Big 12. The Big 12 had seven appearances in the championship game. They were 2-5 and five for a 28.6%. Oklahoma was 1-3. and three. Texas was 1-1. One and, one. and Nebraska was 0-1. Oh the ACC had four championship appearances. They went 2-2 two and two for a 50%. Florida State won two. They lost two. And then the Big 10, they went, had three appearances. They were 1-2. and two. Unfortunately, it was all Ohio State. And so Ohio State won 1-2 and two in championship games during this time. Then we'll go to the Pac-12. The Pac-12 had three appearances. They were 1-2 and two also with a 33% win percentage. They had two participants. USC went 1-1. One and one. Oregon went 0-1. Oh now, later on, that USC was vacated, but you know what? I call it as a win. They beat them on the field. That's kind of the breakdown of the appearances in the bowl. That's also, you know, gives you an idea who won the championships. I think if you look at this, obviously the SEC, I believe, did the best. They had nine champions. They had the highest winning percent in championships games. They went nine and two. Then also, if you look at just all the bowls together, they went 63% in the big games. Pretty dominant. The Big Ten did have more appearances. Unfortunately, they didn't fare as well. The Big 12, though, they had the most different teams in the time in it. If you would, please um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I really would appreciate the subscribe button. I'm having a contest with another person right now to see who can get to 500 the fastest. If you would hit the subscribe button, that would really help me out. Also, if you would, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about these numbers. Um, tell me, you know, who you think the winners were and, you know, what conference was the best, what conference was the worst. Um, if you have an opinion on your team or that, you know, leave in the comments. And as always, everybody, roll tide.